Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? It's Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming, and we're back with Chapter 7 for Uncharted The Lost Legacy. That's right, we actually have a whole slew of collectibles. There's 16 treasures, one lockbox, three conversations, and seven photos that we're going to find throughout this quite long journey here. And it starts off with us uh, picking up right where we left off. In fact, we're going to crawl right on through and check out this amazing view. Look at that. It's pretty awesome. In fact, it's such a beautiful moment. We're going to take a little scenic route with a cutscene and then probably start off with a photo op. We'll have to wait and see. You know, it's not every day you get to see a totally hidden city that nobody else has seen for centuries. Apart from a solve. Apart from a solve. And a few of his men. And a few of his men. You ready? You just totally crushed that moment. You know that, right? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, Nadine. What a stickler she is, or I guess can be. Uh, all right, here we go. As promised, we start things off with that Kodak moment. We pull out our trusty little cell phone and take that beautiful picture of the area. And then we uh, jump out onto this crazy pillar here and immediately find ourselves under fire by some bad guys. So, uh, actually, not immediately. If you get spotted right away, you get shot at. But it takes them a minute to find me because I am so very, very sneaky. But as it turns out, I am just actually going to try to hurry to get through this because it, once you get inside here, it's a little bit easier to fight all these guys than it is taking shots from all sorts of different angles. And uh, that being said, uh, you guys probably don't want to watch a whole lot of fighting. So we're going to go ahead and kind of remove some of the fight scenes throughout this. In fact, this video clocks in at just under an hour. Had I not removed some of the fight scenes and a couple of the other moments uh, that aren't relevant to collectibles, uh, it certainly would have been an hour plus. Uh, if you if you notice too, the video footage that isn't the cutscene, that isn't one of those cinematic beautiful moments, uh, we actually cut out a fair amount of, uh, well, we speed it up. We, sp not, we didn't cut it out, we sped it up. So uh, speaking of cut it out, though, that's, I was, I was looking at one thing and thinking another, and so we cut out the fight scene, as you can see there, and as soon as we get done, we hop over to the far right and we pick our first lockbox of the area. So... Oh, to the yeah. Now, next up, we're going to get a treasure. And keep in mind, we do have quick links for all of these items down below in the video description. So if you're using the old chapter select and you can see that you've, uh, you know, perhaps you're missing maybe like an optional conversation or a treasure, either way, use those quick links to go ahead and quickly make your way through all of them to find out which one you might be missing. Now, uh, we're going to keep on keeping on. And as we do, we find ourselves some more baddies. And uh, I don't really edit out a whole lot of this scene. I, I, I let you see a little bit of the action. But as it turns out, there's this room up above here, and uh, there is a lot going on here. In fact, look at this. I've even got a mega gun. I got the DSHK. I'm not sure what that stands for, but uh, it does work. I can tell you that much. And we got another guy coming in with one, too. So it turns out there's two of those big armored guys that have these big machine guns. And as soon as you get the first guy uh, down, make sure that you grab his weapon so you can take out the remainder of the bad guys. So as it turns out, you don't really need the machine gun beyond this room. So I don't grab one. Or do I? And actually, we just go ahead and make our way right to the back middle of the room. And you'll find this door here, which uh, cues a little moment here where we both got to put our back into it. And that's right, you can do it! We get through, and ooh, it's oh so dark in here. Where's a flashlight when you need one? I'm sure Chloe and Nadine both have them, but apparently it wasn't that dark. And I even got my brightness bumped up a little bit in-game so that you could actually see things. So, All right, here we go. We're actually out in this big area, the open area again, but we got a little bit of a different take on things. And uh, we're going to actually jump out and over onto this weird waterfall ledge. And ooh, what a pretty view it is. We're just actually closer. If you notice that it's the same view, we're just a lot closer. And we're actually going to jump onto it and go through this little cave. Now, I'm going to show you over on the right-hand side, there's a little wall and a little hole in the wall there. We're actually going to go around and climb on down and get inside there and find our next treasure. 
And speaking of treasure, if you have not liked us on Facebook already, I highly recommend that you do, as every Friday we have a giveaway. And we have all sorts of things. Uh, we have hats, stickers, shirts. We've seen all sorts of things come and go throughout the years. And I can't tell you what this week's going to be, because I don't know yet. But once we get there, uh, it'll be posted on Friday. And all you have to do is like that post to be entered. Now, I've kind of talked over our spelunkin here. We found a Lakshmi marriage ornament, so... Uh, must have been something that uh, was, I, I gotta be honest, it wasn't on my list of things to get me when I got married. What do they call those things? Uh, I don't remember. Anyways, uh, yeah, so w anyways, we're gonna keep on keeping on up and around we go. We see this little Hoysala king head here, which is probably not a good sign, but at the same time it doesn't affect us in a negative way, at least yet. And, uh, yeah, so, again, we got quick links down below if you want to get to that next collectible. And meanwhile, we're going to go up and up and away. I actually messed this up. I, you know, I have found that this game does not really like you trying to jump on your first swing. It usually kind of throws you off and, and you plummet to your doom. But in this case, I edited that plummeting out. And uh, that, you might have noticed it right back there as I was swinging. It was a little funky. But, uh, yeah, we, we made it through. And I, I highly recommend just being patient as you'll find that just a few seconds extra of patience while swinging is going to probably save you a minute or two of load time and having to replay part of the level again because you're going to die. At least that's what happens to me. All right, uh, we're getting close to our next collectible. Once we get all the way to the top here, we're going to see this giant statue. We're actually going to ignore that and make our way right on beyond it. And there's this, like, tree kind of hiding behind it. And right behind it, tucked away under one of them roots, we're going to find the next treasure, which is uh, the Hanneman's Brass ba Ball. Oh, I almost said Brass Balls. That would have been unpleasant uh and speaking of hanneman i i, I watch uh, silicon valley <laughs> hanneman does have brass balls if you watch the movie or show anyhow uh moving along we're gonna go ahead and sneak our way through this little corridor here and oh what's up bhu our good buddy mike has apparently logged on for the day all right so once we get down we actually see we see some of Asab's men and they, it turns out they're planning some explosives that uh go bang and luckily for us, we're not worried about that, nor were we close enough. We're actually going to sneak onto the left side of the area, tucked behind that tree. I don't know why all these treasures are hiding behind trees. And I mean, I know Naughty Dog puts them there, but if, if you're, you're looking at it from the story side of things, like, who in the heck puts those there? Like, what the what? And All right, so in the middle of that room where we were uh, thwarted from escaping due to Asab's men blowing up the doorway out of there, we have to find a secondary way out, and it turns out there's a nice little hole in the middle of the room we can swim down and through, and once we get into the next area, you're going to hang a Louie, that's right, hug that left wall and kind of turn around behind you as there's this little alcove, and at the bottom, inside the water, you're going to find the jeweled pipe mouthpiece. Uh, what's going on there? It's a little smoky smoky, huh? Hmm? Anyhow, uh, we got, uh, got to keep on keeping on, but, uh, not too far. As you make your way up the stairs off to the right, you're going to want to stop and pay attention to this Kodak moment as we got another photo op. Now, I actually messed that up, and to be honest with you, I messed this next part up where I had to come back and replay this level again so I could get this right. If you advance past that photo op and you go up to the left, it actually skips this conversation here, and it no longer becomes optional because Nadine walks into the next area. So I did that looking for that photo op because my instructions said go to the top of the stairs and on the left you'll see the the it, and it wasn't there the photo op was actually down at the bottom of the stairs but anyhow uh not dog's fault not trying to point the finger <clears throat> or am i uh really we're just gonna keep on keeping on and we find our way into what appears to be some sort of a library and we're gonna make our way towards the back left of the room and kind of tucked in one of these little alcoves is another one of our treasures i don't know if i consider this a room it's kind of like a pantry of sorts I don't know if there's anything edible or fun in there, but there's definitely lots of stuff. Now, you might notice that I'm not getting that cue on screen telling me that I've actually obtained a treasure. And that happens for this one and the next one. And look at me, I'm running around panicking. And I eventually pull up the menu here, and I go to the treasures, and because Doug had already labeled what item I was looking for, I knew that I was looking for the hand-carved Shisham bread box. So I go through my list, and as it turns out, it's the very last item on the list, but I go right by it. So I go back, urch, and there she blows. So I know I have the item, even though it didn't tell me. So I'm going to go ahead and continue along my journey here, which is actually making our way counterclockwise. No, it is clockwise around the room. 
And uh, anyhow, we're going to go to the very back. On the backside wall is another treasure. This one's for the silver comb perfume flask. And again, it doesn't notify us that we've obtained it. Now, it's really weird because here in a few minutes, you're going to actually see some kind of extra text on screen in a weird moment, like it's not supposed to be there. So we actually get notified later that we've picked these up, but we don't get them right now. But I assure you, uh, if it's happening to you too, it counts. I got done with the game. I went and checked my chapter select and booyah kashow. Speaking of, we're actually going to go ahead and jump right into a rather lengthy, lengthy cutscene. So maybe check out those quick links. It's incredible. I don't know. It's an altar of some kind. Looks like the king suffered dearly for their people. They weren't just protecting the tusk. Historians believe that it was a symbol of power and dominance, but I reckon they misunderstood. It was a symbol of their people, their culture. It was a symbol of them. What sort of this? Dad was here. <laughs> Something big, all right. Oh, why didn't that stupid bastard tell me? I said it yourself. He wanted to keep you safe. Let a salve get that tusk. No. No, we can't. Thank you. Thank me after we get out of this alive. <laughs> Fair point. Don't forget Ganesh. Oh. Glad I brought this. We are too, Chloe. We are too. I don't know what we would have done had we have made it to this point and we didn't have that little gold flake leaf piece thingy. Uh, but yeah, good thing we did. So uh, it opened the door and we are able to keep on along our path here. And hey, guess what? It doesn't take us long before we find ourselves another one of those beautiful scenic moments where we pull out our cell phone and uh, selfie ourselves. No, in this case, we don't. We're actually just going to take a photo of it. And I don't know if you've gone through. You can actually check those out, which is kind of cool. And uh, speaking of checking it out, there's this weird situation here where I totally thought I was going to fall and die. I thought I was dead. But no, that's actually what's supposed to happen. You fall down and she says, come on in, it's deep enough, which is convenient. And once we land, we actually are supposed to turn around and head back towards our right. And once we do, it's the bronze deacon incense burner. So looks like someone's trying to cover up their uh, scents from uh, a couple of collectibles ago. If you remember, we got that jeweled pipe mouthpiece. Hmm. Trying to cover up their trail. You see what I'm getting out here? All right. Uh, we're going to keep on swimming. We're going to head over to the far left side. And you'll notice that there is a doorway that's mostly underwater. But uh, we can go ahead and take a deep breath and swim under. And we actually find this weird situation here with a bunch of roots. And luckily, Nadine comes to the rescue. And we have to spam, 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 spam that triangle button. And all of a sudden, the roots come free. And we can move on through to the other side. And as soon as we do, we get a note that we actually have another treasure coming up. Now, okay. if you've completed 
collected all of the Hoysala treasures found throughout Chapter 4, you've got the Queen's Ruby, and every time you get close to a treasure, it actually notifies you by lighting it up your wrist and actually vibrating the controller, too, which is kind of handy. But uh, All right, we've got the Satavana Hourglass. So, yeah, I don't know what that's for, but uh, we've got lots of things here. And, you know, all said and done... I'm not sure what we do with all these collectibles. Like, do we sell them and get money? Like, it seems like we should get some free unlocks or something in the game for collecting all of these other than just a trophy. I mean, hey, I'll be honest. The trophies are fun and fine. But at the same time, like, give me some sort of reward. Like, let me have some weapon in the future Uncharted or something. You know what I mean? Like, that's what game developers should start working towards is, like, you know, building ahead, creating some sort of... Uh, you know, residual, uh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying, though. Basically, a, a continuance. It'd be awesome to have, you know, some sort of, like, like for example, we've got the, the climbing pick. I mean, it's not very awesome, but it'd be nice to have that if we collected all the collectibles. And we, st I, I don't know, something. You get what I'm saying, though. All right, once you get all the way to the very top, we're actually going to stop one more time and take one more picture. That is a giant tree growing out of the side of a mountain there, and it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Now, uh, I haven't mentioned it in a while, but we do have quick links down below. Speaking of down below, we're going to get pushed off, too. Not really sure why Nadine did that. I mean, she makes some comment about, like, your head back in the game now, but I'm not really digging it. And I thought about editing this out because, really, we just have to climb all the way back up, and it's just kind of a pain in the ass to get all the way up there. But, uh, you know, realistically, uh, it doesn't take that long, and uh, as far as I know, everybody has to do this. I don't think there's anything we could have done differently that could have prevented this. And it doesn't take that long. As you can see, we're already back over to the uh, second to last ledge. And all right, last but not least, all right, we're climbing back up. And luckily for Nadine, she is gone because I would have totally tossed her off the edge. No jokes. No jokes. All right, we're going to make our way through. I have to be honest, too. I am quite claustrophobic. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think I can handle a lot, of, a lot of these situations. I know I talk about climbing on the edges and being afraid of heights, too. Like, these these girls are rather amazing. Uh, you know, Nathan Drake and Sam and, and Sully and everybody that we've played along the way. Hey, for that matter, Laura Croft, too. I mean, let's not leave her out. They're all pretty awesome. Like, this is... I'm getting to live an adventure in-game that I would never get to live in real life because I would not do any kind of spelunking like this, nor, nor would I uh, jump and swing on a rope like that. I uh, would definitely be the guy that swings on the rope and is, you know, a little, little heavy little heavier than the rope would support, and I would, you know, fall or plummet to my doom, as I always say. Anyhow, all right, we uh, swung across, and all of a sudden we've got this beautiful kind of cathedral area with the sun conveniently lighting up the, the special area in the back. So we're going to take out our phone and take a picture of that right quick, and then immediately make our way to the far back left corner of that same room as uh, we got the Chalukaya Griffin candlestick. So... Uh, you know, hey, I talked about it being dark earlier and trying to light the way. That might be the, the solution here, although we don't have any wax on top, so that's not good. No good. Hey, check it out. Uh, you could become a patron at patreon.com slash happy thumbs gaming. If you have not already checked it out, please do. It certainly helps us out with the way things YouTube have been up and down and, uh, you know, views kind of not coming in as prominent as they used to. You know, you being a supporter, even at the $1 tier, believe it or not, helps us a ton. If a handful of you all showed up and did the $1 tier, we would have no more money issues. We'd be able to buy all sorts of things. Our contest giveaway prizes would, like, dramatically increase in awesomeness i mean it, it's all it all goes around it all goes around and speaking of going around we actually have to sneak sink sneak I don't, I don't know what i'm saying here my, my wording is a little off today so thank you for listening but i apologize for any confusion or lack of real words that i'm using but uh yeah you got to sink down under and swim to another room uh, and then you have to actually take a deep breath and go for another swim. And for whatever reason, it pops you up and, and kind of goes through this little cinematic moment. And, you know, I, I mentioned it earlier, but I haven't pointed it out. Did you notice that there's some extra text on the screen right now? It looks like Thumby's saying something about a bronze Deacon incense burner. Uh, maybe that bag in our pocket, Stinky? I, I don't know what's going on, but essentially what I feel is happening here is that that text from the collectible we got earlier that didn't show is now showing. And that's totally what it is, because if you go and do your homework, that's the actual item that we picked up. 
But uh, all right, right as we get to uh, this big statue here, right in front, you'll probably notice that there is a photo moment. And again, off to the left side of the room, we're going to go ahead and jump into the water and find ourselves some treasure. That's right, number 10, the bronze medallion flask. That's right, we got to wash down all them, uh, well, you know what I'm saying. We got, we got to have something to wash down everything we've been uh, partaking in so far. I don't know. I'm getting a little adult in this one, so I'm just assuming that most kids aren't watching this for collectibles as this really isn't a children's game. Uh, but I'm trying to keep the commentary as PG-13 as possible, so, uh, yeah, read between the lines. Hmm? All right, uh, guess what? There is another treasure right here in this lower area. And look at that. It's actually right under the main statue in what appears to be kind of like a pond or pool area, but it's empty. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, someone pulled the drain plug, I guess. And look at that. We've got a bitch dega. I'm not sure what that really means, but uh, if I said that right either. But we're going to hop out of that little pool area, and we're going to head to the back lower right if you're looking at the main statue, it's going to be the back lower right area. And uh, look at that. We've got the Jadelti, Jadelt, Vottle. Uh, it's, is it fun listening to me trying to pronounce some of these weird names? Because, you know, uh, one of the viewers, one of the viewers just like you, and I've had some conversations about us potentially trying to pronounce words that I would fail at. Like uh, this particular viewer happens to be from a country that speaks a different language than English. And you guys know I fail miserably at English, so trying to step my game up and trying to speak other languages, not going to be pretty. But it might be fun. So we, we thought we would uh, present, like, you know, a handful of words, and I would try to pronounce them, and then, of course, she would have the proper... Uh, pronunciations, and then we would we would all laugh at me and and move on. So so if you think that'd be something that you guys would enjoy, then please let me know, and I'll try to make that happen. Now, all right. So uh, the treasure hunt begins here. As you can see, we made our way up the stairs, but then we stopped and we came back down because it turns out there's this weird spot that you can climb up. It's very it's hidden, very easy to miss, and it has a harapan ivory dice. So uh, if your rearview mirror was lacking something, uh, we've got. The perfect thing to hang from your rear view. No, I'm just kidding. Although, you know what? Uh, I don't see many hanging dices anymore. That that definitely takes me back to my childhood, and I'm actually going to go and try to buy some. Um, that would be pretty sweet. Remember, anybody else have hanging dice in their rearview mirror, parents' rearview mirror when you're growing up? Nah, I'm not trying to throw my dad under the bus, but we may or may not have had some hanging dice. All right, uh, we're going to make our way up the stairs all the way to the left side. And basically what we're doing is we're making our way to these mechanisms here. Here is the first one. It turns out there are four of them total, and they actually move these giant hands or arms and hands around. And you can see here, as soon as we start spinning around, Nadine starts flapping her yapper about something, and uh, we call her out, and we're like, uh, what are you talking about? But anyways, she keeps talking, and eventually we're going to walk up to her, and she's going to give us an option to converse again. And you might have noticed a little bit of a blip there. Well, I had to make an edit because I made a huge boo-boo based on some uh, wrong interpretations of our trophy guide here. So essentially, our guide told me to jump onto the hand and move to the next one. Now, you can see right now the camera is panning up to the left, telling me that I need to get up to the left in order to make the next little thing happen. Except for I read the directions wrong, and I went to the next hand, which was over to my right. So I went from the lower left hand to the lower right hand. And really, you need to go from the lower left hand to the upper left hand. And you can see that's what I'm doing right now. Once I get up here, I'm actually going to jump over to this left-hand ledge and drop down as there's this little area kind of tucked in here. And guess what? Yep, as you might have guessed, we got some ivory chess pieces just hanging out in here waiting to be put back on the table and uh, perform some checkmateage. That's right. All right, look at that. Well, there's a whole handful of them. It looked like we only picked up one thing, but it turns out there's like, what, six of them right there? It's kind of random. All right, back up we go, and uh, it doesn't take us long to get back up and find the next mechanism at the very top. Although we do have some trickery to get up there. As you can see, uh, we jump down on this ledge, and oh, wait a minute, wait wait a minute. All of a sudden, we're right back where we started. That's pretty cool. We, we got the little wheel here. We're going to go ahead and spin it around, and this is actually kind of tricky because it's all a time-based thing. As soon as we get this thing to the very top, the timer clicks, and you can hear it ticking away. Now, technically, I've already kind of made a mistake as we don't really want to go that route yet. Uh, this would be the way we would go. We would jump off the left ledge there onto the end of the pole that the hand is holding. But we're actually going to go up and around and sneak to this back corner over here and grab some earrings. That's right. Some Chola earrings. 
pretty, 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 I guess. But, uh, all right, so you can see that uh, little handle is going down now, so we're going to have to go back down and spin that wheel one more time. And once we get it back up, we're actually going to go ahead and get all the way to the top, and a whole bunch of stuff happens, but it's all story-based stuff. So there is a lot of nonsensical stuff between now and the next collectible. So if you're in a hurry for it, it's actually going to be for treasure number 16, and it's going to be for the Bridal Mangatika. I'm not really sure what that even really means, but uh, O to the end. Oh, no, I'm falling. I don't want to do that. Uh, so, yeah, I made a mistake here, and I'm going to have to go back up and probably spin that wheel again before I should go up there. So, okay, we, we know what we're doing now, and to be honest with you, in my editing process, I actually missed this and forgot to remove this, like, 30 seconds or so. Normally, I would remove this and try to splice it in so I looked all awesome, but I didn't. But, see, the problem is there's a couple of collectibles that I've already had times for and got everything, and, and it would just be easier for me to leave this in as of now. So, hey, third time is the charm. We spin that wheel again and we're gonna hop up to our high right side here and then jump onto the end of that pole as we've already indicated a couple of times but this time i'm actually gonna make it happen now uh if you have not already you are welcome to go ahead and quickly click those quick links uh if not if you're kind of stuck as you might find that uh, it, there is a little bit of confusion coming up here and i got stuck too in fact uh, we get to a spot and and the wife was sitting right next to me and she suggested i do something but to me, that sounded like I was going to find my death a lot quicker uh, if I did what she suggested. And turns out she was right, uh, but it took me a few minutes to gain the confidence to follow her. So uh, what I'm talking about is we're going to actually use our rope to swing out here and get to the very top where our camera indicated we needed to go after we moved that first mechanism down below, uh, right before that optional conversation with Nadine. And now once we get up here, we're actually going to spin this wheel around. Now you've seen one of these wheels before, and if you remember, it actually kind of made some sort of waterfall action happen so once we spin it around again guess what it happens again and we get some waterfall edge and this is where <laughs> well, my wife was like hey uh, slide down the waterfall that looks like fun and i thought she was kidding right because that totally looks like a bad plan but as it turns out that's what you need to do so be ready to use your rope when you get to the bottom of it though as you will fall and die <laughs> if you don't but it's fun you can swing around and once you uh Gain your uh, bearings here. We actually drop down onto the lower right hand. So uh, make it good ground now. We know where our next treasure is, and it's actually going to be up over to our right, but we got to drop down onto this lower ledge before we gain access to it. Now, there's a couple of ways you can get there. We found it when we were looking for, what was it, treasure 14, I believe it was? We Because when I made that mistake and went from the lower left hand to the lower right hand instead of going lower left to upper left... Oh, man, I totally, I was over here, and I was stuck over here. I couldn't get back over to the left side, and uh, we were running around. It was crazy. But anyways, all right, so skip the mechanism once you get up to the high right side, and we're going to go by the other mechanism on the high right side, and guess what? There's actually this lower area down below here. I'm going to show you there's a pillar right below us, and that's where the treasure is, but uh, to make things safe and not fall and die, which we've done uh, enough in this video here, Although we edited a few of those out. Uh, we're going to go all the way down, take the safe route. Down the stairs we go, and around the back side of the pillar is the treasure. That's right. We got the Mangtika. It looks like some sort of like a, I don't know, like a lock pick, or I don't know what that is. Maybe some sort of jewelry I'm unfamiliar with. But uh, all right, back up we go. And as you probably remember, there are two mechanisms we need to spin around. So um, here in a minute, we're, once we get this spun uh, we're actually going to, uh, we got a big puzzle coming up, and unfortunately, we've got a big battle, and, and to be completely honest with you, there's still like 20 minutes or more of this video left, but there's only two collectibles. So, if you're in a hurry, again, I highly recommend checking out those collectibles. Those quick links are very easy and helpful to get to. And alright, so both these mechanisms are being spun, and if you pay attention, you can see that the one that Nadine spins gives us access to this lower arm. So we're going to go ahead and jump out onto the hands. Ooh, that was a close one. And luckily for us, although it is a time-based situation, uh, we gravity is in our favor right now because we can actually uh, get lifted up by this arm. And look at this. All of a sudden, instead of climbing up, we are standing up, and we are right at the very tippy top. So that's right, uh, I'll go ahead and jump out onto this other ledge and climb all the way up to the top where we're going to find, guess what, another one of those water wheels. That's right, and once we spin it, spoiler alert, some more water will begin to fall. Now, 
Uh, again, we uh, got some cutscenes and uh, not a lot of collectibleage right away. Um, in fact, we still got a couple, of, well, a minute and a half or so before we get to the next one. So, yeah, guess what? We get to slide down another waterfall. Psych! There's a door that opens. So we only got that journey once. But uh, once we go in here, it actually takes us over to the other side. So I thought about having some fun and, uh, you know, sliding down this waterfall using the old rope swing to get to the other one. But I thought, you know what, I might die and then I'd look like a noob. And I already do a pretty good job of that without trying. So, all right, up the stairs we go all the way to the main mechanism up here. And this bad boy is going to actually... Uh, move the hands in such a way that it's going to uh, reflect the water, I believe? No, it just fills the water. That's right. It open So when the arms moved, it opened up some internal caverns and the water flows. And look at that. As a result, we now have some light, kind of a rainbow, shining across the way up to this upper balcony area. Like, what? Where, where did that even come from? I didn't even know that was there. And oh, so conveniently, this giant chandelier pops down, and it's so far away. There's no way we can toss a rope out there uh, oh look, look at that all right so uh, i thought we were gonna have to find some wonky way to get up there but it turns out it's right in front of us so uh, that's right go ahead and get your tarzan on and swing all the way over there and we find out that there is this uh statue we've seen one of these before this guy is gonna be uh spinning a bowl spinnable spunnable no nah, you know what i'm saying uh, really, it's a prism, and, and we allow light to come in one side, and it will actually reflect light out both the left and right side. So what we want to do is we want to face this girl statue, or I think it's a female. I'm pretty sure it's a very skinny male with earrings if it's not. Oh, and, yep, he's got a little extra uh, packaging on the upper area there. Anyway, uh, you want to get that pointed right at the eyes. So once that gets at the eyes, you'll see the beams coming out left and right, and I don't have quite the angle. It's kind of a funny angle at the moment. But you can see my right, well, depending on which way you're looking at it, the red beam is not quite intact. But the blue beam is pretty close, sort of. So uh, as it turns out, we need to get it a little bit more, about maybe about 10 degrees more. And we're going to go ahead and spin it right now. Nope, wrong way, Brian. Wrong way, Brian. I don't know why I was having a hard time with these, spinning these around. So, all right, there we go. We locked it in there. And uh, although we could see the red beam has successfully bounced off of the statue over there, or is hitting it anyways, the, the left side is not doing anything. So, uh, the opposite side, the, the blue beam. It's hard to say left and right because they keep turning around. But, uh, all right, so as soon as we get the light created and it's locked in, look at that. Nadine is going to walk to the front and start talking about Shiva's third eye and Booyah Kashao. We're going to ask her about it, completing our third and final optional conversation for this chapter. And then almost immediately, we're going to follow her over to the other side where the blue beam is. And we're going to notice that the statue is broken. So there is no way to spin it around and reflect that light like we're going to do with the red beam. And as a result, she picks up the mirror and holds it. And, hey, what a better time to get a nice little photo than when she's uh, being useful, right? She's taking a couple photos of us, like remember the elephant moment? That was pretty cool. But in this case, we're actually going to go ahead and hand this on over to her and take a photo to document that she was part of this journey too. What are you doing? All right, so she's going to go ahead and hop up there. and That's right. You can do it. Put your back into it. Get up there. All right, I, I was a little bit suspect about it. I wasn't sure this was going to work. But as it turns out, she is a pretty good statue. That mirror looks awfully heavy, too. I don't know about you, but I don't know if I could lift that up. But all right, so she's officially holding it up. And uh, once she's holding it, you're going to see the photo op kind of in the front left side of her. I, again, it depends on which way your camera is facing. But uh, it's in the middle of the room, the middle front side. All right, uh, Booyah Kashao. Guess what, boys and goyles? That actually wraps up all of the collectibles for this chapter. So, yeah, that is a lot. Now, we do have a little battle that ensues here in a minute. We've got a little bit of some puzzle solving to do first, too. But as it turns out, uh, not a whole lot of awesomeness, especially if all you're here for is the collectibles. Now, if you want to see what happens with the journey and you're actually trying to figure out what happens with the Lost Legacy and what, what these statues actually do, then don't worry. We got you covered. We're going to hang out. However, it does get really cutscene intensive at the end. So the game does a lot of the talking for me. But uh, all right, so we got to spin these statues around, and essentially we got to lock them up. And uh, over on each of the sides, like right now, you can see where that beam is. 
I have to try and line that up with that other statue. But see, that statue's not in the right place. So I am kind of like wasting time right now. I didn't know that at the time, but I, I am. And what I need to do is actually need to drop this statue and run out to that other one and move it. It needs to come over to my left right now just a little bit. Not very far, but a little bit. And the reason is because you can see once I hit the light with it, it, it reflects straight up. And straight up, there is another reflector mirror. And unfortunately, I have to match those up. Now, hey, beware. That ledge right there does not hold up very long. It, it, in fact, it crumbles here pretty, pretty soon. And, and so, to be honest, in all fairness, it did take me a minute to figure this out. I was pretty sure that there was gravity moving that statue on wheels there. So I thought I was going to have to hold it in place while Nadine did something. But it turns out that was not the case. But eventually, when I get it in... The right spot, uh, Nadine makes a comment about putting it in the right... She, she aims it for me. Look at that. It's it's actually blasted off, and we've got the left side. So the, the red beam is secure. Now we just got to go over and basically do the same thing to the other side, to the blue beam. And again, I told you that ledge isn't going to hold very long, and luckily for us, it holds long enough to get across. But once we return, it's uh, not good, I promise you. All right, so we could use the rope swing, too. That's that's always an option. But we are not trying to go out over there, or are we? See, I wasn't sure. I'm still kind of confused with <laughs> what I'm doing. Uh, I, I'm looking at it thinking, I, I feel like the green and blue light ray is actually hitting that cage in the middle, but it's not. So I got to go back over there and mess with it, just as promised. All right, so once we get over here, basically what we got to do is the same thing. We got to move the rolling mirror statue uh, in such a way that Nadine can reflect that other light over and get us. Now, it, it's not reflecting right now because Nadine is not over there. But it will happen once we get there. Just wait for it. Wait for it. So here we go. We're all the way out on the far ledge now. We're going to move this roller. And unfortunately, things, of course, uh, don't always go as planned. But, but they kind of do, but kind of don't. You'll see. So we're going to line this bad boy up. We want it to reflect the light coming from Nadine to go straight up at the ceiling. And so we're not quite sure where that light is yet because she wasn't aiming it, but boo you can shout. Okay, I nailed that did it. Something. So I can put this down? No, wait for it. What's happening? I can't see from over here. Just uh, hold still for just a sec. All this water. It's a cleansing ritual. What's happening? Oh, you can put down the mirror now. Oh, shit. They found us! Get you ready? Shit! Oh, no, no, no! Get up here! Good, good enough, go! Alright, pull yourself up and make it to safety, only to find yourself being attacked by a bunch of Asav's men, which we are gonna go ahead and edit out just to help save a little bit of time. We get to the final guy and drop him like he's hot, and we jump over to that ledge that I kept talking about earlier, and guess what? It does not hold up the final time, and we fall into the water, but luckily for us, it is deep enough that we do not die, and it looks like it for a second, it goes gray, but no, we fall, and guess what? Into another long, lengthy cutscene we go. Well, now that was quite the fall. You had me worried. Come, it's time for a reunion. He wouldn't give you up, despite my efforts to persuade him. Sam! Jesus. Hey, you made it. Dude. It's all right. He is like a girl. Is that right? How about we get these cuffs off and I'll show you how girls hit? What the hell is she doing here? You said find help, I got help. Yeah. I must admit, you are quite the schemer. First you steal my disc, then you have your expert run me around in circles, huh? <laughs> That's clever. Perhaps there's a little Indian blood in you after all. Huh. 
Let's finish what we started. All right, all right. <clears throat> so, Nadine Voss. Don't talk to me. <laughs> I was gonna say, you look good. Was I not clear? What's that smell? Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't exactly had access to running water and soap recently. God. All the people you could have brought with you. <laughs> she saved my ass more than once, you know. You do remember that uh, she also tried to kill Nathan and I many, many times. And to be fair, you two tried to do the same to her. Uh, yeah, but that, that's not the point. The point is that the second we turn our backs, there will be a knife in there. I can hear every word you're saying. I know! I trust her. <laughs> you know what? Fine. I guess I'm just a little bit irked that we are walking away with nothing. But I guess you know what that's like, right? <laughs> oh! oh, my. Real classy, thank you. Time and place, children. More that came from. Bike racks after school. Ugh. Just hurry up! the kings have one final test. Looks like you won't be needing us, though, so we'll just be on oh, our on way. Oh, on the contrary. Surely you know the story. <laughs> you see, Shiva gave Parashuram the mighty axe that struck Ganesh in the face, bringing Shiva's son, one of the greatest of the gods, to his knees. Another casualty of war. Don't. Yeah, seriously, Chloe, he's just gonna kill! Uh, he's right. But if you refuse, uh, you will watch them die, uh, inch by inch. All right! <coughs> Chloe, don't! Sharama. Don't all try right, all right, all right. Let's let's get it out in the open. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, and not the one on the wall. Let's talk about the long and lengthy, the double, the double whammy. There, I guess I could have said long or lengthy cutscene. I didn't need to say long, lengthy cutscene, right? All right. Okay, so we've made it through that long, lengthy cutscene, and we arrive in this room which uh, there's actually a couple of levers alongside the wall. Each of those levers rise a poster, kind of showing us or telling us a story. Now, it took me seven or eight attempts before I figured this out. And to be all honest, Ape, shout out to the wife. She figured it out. Uh, I actually solved the rolling, the rotating puzzle here. But then when it came down to it, she solved the overall room puzzle, which essentially, once you get these lined up, which is a real pain in the tuchus, you, you actually have to uh, recreate this story. So um, as it turns out, you need to move the giant elephant in the room and you need to submit. So he's yielding. She even says it right there. He's yielding. And uh, it, we actually get control of all four of his arms, and then we can actually kind of initiate to see if the puzzle is correct or not. So in this particular case, we have edited uh, all of our mishaps, and uh, we're actually going to show you the solution. So up on the wall in the middle, the actual rotating puzzle we solved, it shows him submitting with all of his arms down, basically saying, take me, I'm not going to fight back. 
So we're going to actually select each of his four arms and lower them so that he is to submitting. And once we do that, it actually solves the puzzle and takes us into another cutscene. Now we thought about removing these cutscenes and all of this content, but we thought this puzzle was kind of a pain in the ass, so we thought you guys might want some solutions for it. So, oh, here we go. Solved. Huh? Are you all right? Yeah. That was unexpected. <gasps> Holy shit, she's got balls, huh? I, I don't understand. It's an idiot. That's because you've got it all twisted, my friend. Ganesh allowed himself to be struck by the axe. That makes no sense. Not to a selfish prick, no. <laughs> See, Ganesh could have defeated Parashurama easily. But if he had, that would have made Shiva's axe look weak. Powerless. Ganesh sacrificed himself to preserve his father's honor. See, even she gets it, not a drop of Indian blood in her. Magnificent, isn't it? Oh, what? Nothing to say now? Oh, if you like, I can tell you where to stick it. <laughs> well, my friends, I would love to kill you myself, but we must not anger the gods, for you have brought me a great fortune. Okay, then, what are you doing? You're going to flood the chamber. I will miss you. Come on, is this really necessary? You know, nothing is ever truly destroyed. Only purified and reborn. Just shoot us and get it over with. Right? As the water fills your lungs, you will have time to reflect on the choices that brought you here. Perhaps in your next lives, you will fare better. Prick. I don't know about you guys, but I got a lot of regrets swimming around in my head right now. Tell me about it. I was really looking forward to kicking your ass again. Hey, you know, I'm not exactly thrilled about drowning next to you, either. Could you give it a rest, guys? I'm trying to concentrate. What are you doing? A little preparation goes a long way. Ha-ha, <laughs> yes! We got one last action sequence here where we actually have to pick a lock, and I have to be honest, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get both of them, and as it turns out, oh no, guess what? We are not going to be able to get both of them. We lost the key, and uh, you know, I tried holding my breath for this, and I've even fast forwarded this footage up just a little bit. There was no way I would have been dead already. Uh, it was, sorry, Sam, we would have all been toast. And all right, we uh, free Sam, thanks to the help of Nadine with a slam on a rock. And we swim up to the top, and it actually takes us to our final cutscene. So we'll see you at the end when we discuss what's next. Everyone good? No water logs. Doing great. Yeah. I gotta quit smoking. <coughs> Stop! Think they saw us? Let's hope not. How the hell did Asaf get that helicopter? Maybe it's the buyers. What do you mean? Still heard Asaf talking about <coughs> heading to the old rail yard, something about an arms deal. He's selling the tusk. So much for preserving his culture. Hey, just a second. Listen, uh, <clears throat> back there. Thanks for... Professional courtesy. <laughs> of course. So, are we good? No. I figured. If we hurry, we can intercept them before they make the sale. Huh. And there's our ride. Nice 
eyes. There. Railroad tracks. Stop here. I saw we'll have lookouts throughout the area. Best door on the side of caution. Right, right, right. And then we lose the tusk. You're welcome to stay behind. I'm just saying. All right, all right, all right, all right. Less talking, more walking. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Guess what? We are actually done with Chapter 8, which means we are officially in the home stretch. Chapter 8 only has a handful of collectibles, and Chapter 9 only has three. So we get a couple of trophies for completing some of the collectibles in the next chapter, and then we'll move on and finish it up in Chapter 9. Oh, to the at. Uh, that's going to wrap it up for me. And as always, until next time.